Transaction Analysis In the video of the introduction to the accounting equation and basic financial statements, an example is used to illustrate the effect of a transaction on the accounting equation. In this video, we will see how transactions are analyzed into debits and credits. The same previous transactions are used. On January 1st, the business issued common shares to shareholders for $100,000. To analyze any transaction, we are to ask ourselves five questions as follows. Number one, what are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business received cash, cash is involved and it issued shares, so the other account is common shares. Number two, which category does each account fall into? Cash is owned by the business, and so it falls in the assets category. Common shares falls in the shareholders' equity. How are the accounts affected? Cash increased as the business received cash, and common shares increased as it issued more shares to get this cash. Number four. What is the normal balance, the positive side, of the category in which the account falls? Assets has a normal debit balance. Shareholders' equity has a normal credit balance. Number five, let's apply the rule. Cash appears in the assets category whose normal balance is debit, and it increased. So $100,000 is recorded in the debit side. Common shares appears in the shareholders' equity category, whose normal balance is credit, and it increased. So $100,000 is recorded in the credit side. Remember the rule that any category increases in the side of its normal balance and decreases in the opposite side. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets increased by $100,000 in the form of cash, there is a net increase of 100,000 on the left-hand side. Shareholders' equity increased on the right-hand side by $100,000 as well, so both sides balance. On January 5th, the business bought computers for $10,000 in cash. To analyze any transactions, we are to ask ourselves again five questions as follows. What are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business bought computers, the computer's account or office equipment account is involved and cash is paid. So the cash account is also involved. The second question, which category does each account fall into? Cash falls in the assets category and computers are owned by the business. So they fall in the asset category as well. How are the accounts affected? Cash decreased since the business paid cash to buy the computers, and computers increased since the business now owns computers. Question 4. What is the normal balance, the positive side of the category in which the account falls? The assets category has a normal debit balance. Let's apply the rule. Cash falls in the asset category whose normal balance is debit, and it decreased. So 10,000 is recorded in the opposite side of its normal balance, which is the credit side. Computers falls also in the assets category, whose normal balance is debit, and it increased. So 10,000 is recorded in the debit side. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets increased by 10,000 in the form of computers, and decreased by 10,000 in the form of cash. There is a net increase of zero on the left-hand side. The right-hand side of the equation is not affected, so both sides balance. On January 10th, the business bought furniture for $20,000, paid $5,000 in cash, and the rest on account. Again, to analyze any transaction, we have to ask ourselves five questions. Question 1. What are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business bought furniture, the furniture account or office furniture account is involved, and cash is paid. So cash account is also involved. 
also the business owes money to someone other than the owner, who is the furniture vendor in this case. So a liability account is involved, which is the accounts payable account. The second question would be which category does each account fall into? Both cash and furniture fall in the asset category and accounts payable falls in the liability category. How are the accounts affected? Cash decreased since the business paid cash to buy the furniture. Furniture increased since the business now owns furniture. Accounts payable increased since the business now owes money to the furniture's vendor. What is the normal balance? The positive side of the category in which the accounts fall. The assets category has a normal debit balance and the liability category has normal credit balance. Now let's apply the rule. Cash falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it decreased. So 5,000 is recorded on the opposite side of its normal balance, which is the credit side. Furniture also falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it increased. So 20,000 is recorded in the debit side. Accounts payable falls in liabilities category whose normal balance is credit and it increased so it is credited by $15,000. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets increased by $20,000 in the form of furniture and decreased by $5,000 in the form of cash. There is a net increase of $15,000 on the left-hand side. Liabilities increased on the right-hand side by $15,000 as well. So both sides balance. On January 15th, the business provided consulting services to a client for $14,000. To analyze the transaction, we have to ask ourselves the five usual questions. What are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business received cash, the cash account is involved. It received cash because it provided consulting services and that is revenue. So the consulting revenues account is involved. The second question is, which category does each account fall into? Cash falls in the assets category and consulting revenues falls in the revenue category. The third question is, how are the accounts affected? Cash increased since the business received cash and consulting revenues increased since the business provided the services. The fourth question is, what is the normal balance, the positive side of the category in which the account falls? The asset category has a normal debit balance and the revenues category has a normal credit balance. Let's apply the rule. Cash falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it increases. So $14,000 is recorded in the debit side. Consulting revenues falls in the revenue category whose normal balance is credit and it increased. So $14,000 is recorded in the credit side. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets increased by $14,000 in the form of cash. This is a net increase of $14,000 on the left-hand side. Revenues increased on the right-hand side by $14,000 as well, so both sides balance. On January 20th, the business paid $5,000 of renting office space. To analyze any transactions, we are going to ask ourselves the usual five questions. Question number one, what are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business paid cash, the cash account is involved. It paid cash because it rented a place to generate revenue. So that is regarded as an expense. So rent expense account is involved. The second question will be which category does each account fall into? Cash falls in the assets category and rent expense fall in the expenses category. How are the accounts affected? Cash decreased since the business paid cash and rent expense increased because the business didn't have any rent expense before. So what's the normal balance, the positive side of the category in which the account falls? Both assets and expense categories have a normal debit balance. Let's apply the rule. 
cash falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it decreases. So $5,000 is recorded in the credit side. Rent expense falls in the expenses category whose normal balance is debit and it increases. So $5,000 is recorded in the debit side as well. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets decreased by $5,000 in the form of cash. Expenses increased by $5,000 in the form of rent expense. There is a net effect of zero in the left-hand side. The right-hand side of the equation is not affected, so both sides balance. On January 24th, the business paid $4,000 to the furniture's vendor. To analyze the transaction, we ask ourselves the usual five questions. What are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business paid cash, the cash account is involved. It paid cash because it is paying to the furniture's vendor, who is a liability and specifically an account payable. So accounts payable, accounts is involved. Which category does each account fall into? Cash falls in the assets category and accounts payable falls in the liabilities category. How are the accounts affected? Cash decreased since the business paid cash and accounts payable decreased as well since the business now owes the vendor less. So what's the normal balance, the positive side of the category in which the account falls? The assets category has a normal debit balance and the liabilities has a normal credit balance. Let's apply the rule. Cash falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it decreases, so $4,000 is recorded in the credit side. Accounts payable falls in the liabilities category whose normal balance is credit and it decreases, so $4,000 is recorded in the debit side. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets decreased by $4,000 in the form of cash. This is a decrease of $4,000 on the left-hand side. Liabilities decreased by $4,000 in the form of accounts payable. This is a net decrease of $4,000 on the right-hand side as well. So both sides balance. On January 28th, the business provided consulting services to a client for $20,000 who promised to pay in 15 days. To analyze the transaction, we're going to ask ourselves the usual five questions. What are the accounts involved in this transaction? Since the business provided consulting services, revenue is recognized and so the consulting revenue account is involved. The client didn't pay but owes money to the business. The business owns the right to receive money in the future and that is what is called accounts receivable. So the account receivable account is involved. Which category does each account fall into? Accounts receivable falls in the assets category since the business owns the right to receive money in the future and consulting services falls in the revenue category. How are the accounts affected? Account receivable increases since the business now owns the right to receive cash in the future. Consulting revenue increases as well since the business provided the consulting service to the client. What is the normal balance or the positive side of the category in which the account falls? The assets category has a normal debit balance and the revenue category has a normal credit balance. Let's apply the rule. Account receivable falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it increased. So $20,000 is recorded in the debit side. Consulting revenues falls in the revenue category whose normal balance is credit and it increased. So $20,000 is recorded in the credit side. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets increased by $20,000 in the form of accounts receivable. This is an increase of $20,000 on the left-hand side. Revenues increased by $20,000 in the form of consulting revenues. This is a net increase of $20,000 on the right-hand side as well. So both sides balance. On January 30th, the business distributed $3,000 to shareholders as dividends. To analyze this transaction, we ask ourselves the usual five questions. What are the accounts involved in this transaction? 
cash is paid, so cash account is involved. Dividends are distributed, so the dividends account is involved as well. Which category does each account fall into? Cash falls in the assets category and dividends account falls in the dividends category. How are the accounts affected? Cash decreased since it is paid. Dividends increased since the business didn't distribute any dividends before and now it distributed dividends. What is the normal balance or the positive side of the category in which the account falls? Both assets and dividends categories have normal debit balances. Let's apply the rule. Cash falls in the assets category whose normal balance is debit and it decreased, so $3,000 is recorded in the credit side. The dividends accounts falls in the dividends category whose normal balance is debit and it increased, so $3,000 is recorded in the debit side. Notice the overall effect on the accounting equation. Assets decreased by $3,000 in the form of cash, dividends increases by $3,000. There is zero change on the left-hand side. The right-hand side is not affected, so both sides balance.